Welcome to lesson 4. This lesson matches the Essential Tools objective. You'll find four tasks covering a remote repository management, local repository management, managing permissions, and finding files. All right, the first task. Let's check it out. So in this task, you are going to configure remote repository access. You need to configure your system such that it can use the repository, which is on https colon slash slash repository.example.com. Ensure that no GPG checks will be done while accessing this repository. And also make sure that the client will not actually use this repository. To verify your work, the repository should not show while using the DNF repo list command, but its configuration should exist. You feel ready to do it? I would say do it. Do it right now. And once you are done, well, later on we have the, the lab evaluation scripts, but for now you don't have access to a repository to install the Git client. So uh, keep that in mind, that there's a lab evaluation script. I will show you how to do that after setting up the required repositories in the next video. And if you need a little bit more help, uh, continue watching before you are looking at the solution. So uh, what are the key elements for doing this task? Without access to repositories, a RHEL server cannot install software. Registered RHEL servers have access to the Red Hat repositories. And on the exam, all servers are offline, so by default there will be no repository access. To configure repository access, a file with the name that ends in .repo needs to be added to the etc yum.repos.d directory. And to facilitate creating this file, use DNF config manager minus minus add repo. Uh, on the exam, you may expect that the URL to a repository is provided. Now let me show you the solution for this task. Okay, so uh, DNF config manager it is minus minus add repo uh, https colon slash slash repository dot example dot com. And the result is visible in etc yum dot repos dot d, where you can find this repository example dot com dot repo file. That's the one that is just being being created. Now we need to tweak it a little bit. First, the requirement was that the client will not actually use this repository, and you can do that by changing enabled to uh, zero. That is convenient if you want the configuration to be present, but you only want to enable it in specific cases, which is what we are doing right here. Then GPG check is zero, is making sure that no GPG check will be done. Otherwise, you will need to set up GPG public-private keys to verify the integrity of the repository, and that's really something beyond the scope of our HCSA. Now, once you have done it, use DNF repo list, the only way to really check that it is doing all right is by verifying the configuration in the repository file. If it looks like this, then you're good to move on to the next task. In the next task, you are going to configure local repository access. Make an ISO file of your installation disk and store it as slash rel9.iso. Mount it persistently on the directory slash repo on your local server. And configure your local server to access this mounted disk as a repository. Also verify that you can install packages from this repository. Again, if you feel ready for it, go do it. And after doing it, feel free to check your results from the course Git repository. This Git repository is available at github.com slash Sander van Vught uh, slash RHCSA labs, and you will find lab 41 greatsh as the solution. It's very easy, and I will show you later in this video how exactly it works. You need a little bit more help? Keep on watching uh, so that I can provide some additional information about the key elements. First, to create an ISO file, you use the dd command. And to mount the ISO file persistently, add the line to etc fs tab and use the ISO 9660 file system type. It is possible, but really not recommended, to create a systemd mount unit. And honestly, in all the great scripts, I'm assuming that you are putting your mounts in etc fs tab, so keep it simple and do just that. 
You already know that you can use DNF config manager minus minus add repo uh, to create the repository. Or if you really want to, you can manually add the repository file to the etcum.reposod directory. And in the base URL statement, you use file colon slash slash as the resource type identifier. Notice that the resulting file will have file colon slash slash followed by a slash. So that's three slashes in a row, because the third slash is the start of your directory path. Let me show you the solution. So the very first thing in the solution is that you need to make sure that in your virtualization software, your installation ISO is connected. That's not always the case, but here I can see the option disconnect CD, DVD. I don't need to disconnect anything. This is what I'm going to need. So next I can use DD IF is dev SR0, OF is slash rel 9iso And even if by itself that would work, I would suggest you add BS is 1M. To work with one maybe by blocks, because if you don't, it will stream byte by byte and that will make it significantly slower. Now, depending on the hardware that you are using, uh, this might take anywhere between 30 seconds or multiple minutes. I can't make any promises. It's really depending on the hardware that you are using. The only promise that I can make is that you need to make sure that it completes before continuing. As you can see, this was very fast, 20 seconds only. Oh, and also DF minus H. I'm showing you DF minus H just to remind you that we are working on a 20 gigabyte hard disk. On a 20 gigabyte hard disk with the default setting, you will have sufficient disk space. If you're not on a 20 gigabyte hard disk, you will run out of disk space in this lab. So reconsider the configuration of your virtual machine if this is a problem. Then I need to mount it persistently. So let's get into etc fs tab. That's why you take care of persistent mounts. And there I'm using rel9.iso and I'm mounting it on slash repo. The file system type is ISO 9660. Mount options are defaults, followed by 00. Of course, we need to create the mount point. And then to verify that my configuration in etc fs step is all right, I'm using mount minus a. And oh my goodness, do you see what is going on? This is the nice thing about mount minus a. Mount minus a is complaining that the special device does not exist. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Look at that. OF is rel9.iso. So where did I create rel9.iso? In the home directory of the root user. There's only one solution, even if this happens on the exam. Make sure you configure it the way it should be configured. So don't go use the rel9 ISO in the home directory of your root uh, user, but move it to the slash directory. Because that is what the exam is going to evaluate, and that is where it should be. So now it is there, and I can try the mount minus a command again. If you want to give it a quick check on slash repo and in slash repo, you can see the contents of the uh, installation disk. So in this installation disk, we have a base OS and an AppStream subdirectory, and we need to use them. Uh, so DNF config manager minus minus add repo file colon slash slash. That's the universal resource identifier followed by the pad slash repo slash base OS. And make sure that you respect the case in base OS and you do the same for AppStream. Now we are not completely done yet because uh, by default, GPG check is enabled. So you need, you need to get into repo underscore base OS and you need to add the line GPG check is zero to disable the GPG check. Otherwise, you can't install anything. So vim repo underscore appstream dot repo. Likewise, you are adding gpg check is zero to disable the gpg check. And now we need to verify that we can actually use it. Well, dnf install minus y git. I need a git client. 
the Git repository is pretty important for this course. So uh, in the home directory of the root user, use git clone https colon uh, slash slash github.com slash Sander van Vught slash rhcsa labs. So now you have a subdirectory rhcsa labs and there you can see all the different lab grade scripts. And the lab grade script we need for this one is lab42-grade. So I would say run it, lab42-grade, and it will tell you if you've done uh, all right or not. And here you can see all the different checks. Look, it has found that the ISO file exists and the RHEL 9 ISO file is mounted and a persistent mount was found. And the repo baseOS is there and a GPG check is disabled for it and the repo AppStream is there and GPG check is disabled for this as well. And if you made any errors, well, the script will tell you about it. Oh, and now that we are talking about these scripts, uh, let's also run it for lab 41, where you can see lab 41 also is uh, correctly done. That's all, let's move forward. All right, let's do the next task, managing permissions. So in this task, you are going to create a directory with the name slash data slash profs. Create a group with the name profs and a user with the name Linda. Then configure permissions such that user Linda can not read or write files in the directory data profs, but she is allowed to change permissions on the directory slash data slash profs. Members of the group profs should be able to read and write files in the directory slash data slash profs, and nobody else should have access to the directory. As before, you feel ready for it? Do it, and verify your solution later. If you want a little bit more help, continue watching for the key elements. So basic permissions are uh, based on ownership, and that's the essence to this uh, task. Each file has a user owner, a group owner, and the others entity. And while evaluating permissions, Linux checks user ownership and group ownership. If the user accessing a file is neither user owner nor group owner, permissions for others are assigned. And the check will exit on match. And that means that if a user is user owner, group permissions and permissions for others are not checked. And that's an essential part to the solution of this task. Let's check out the solution. All right, mkdir minus p slash data slash profs to create a directory structure. I like to start already with an ls minus ld on slash data slash profs so that we can verify the current settings. Let's keep it for what it is right now uh, and first create this group uh, profs and the user linda. So group add profs will create the group, user add linda minus uppercase g profs will create user Linda and will make user Linda a member of the group profs. It's smart to verify. ID on a user allows you to verify the current group membership. And there we can see that user Linda uh, is a member of the group's Linda and she's a member of group profs. That's what we needed. Then we come to the permissions part. Uh, so you need to configure permissions such that user Linda can not read or write files in the directory data profs, but she is allowed to change permissions on the directory data profs. How are we going to do that? Well, that's very easy. Uh, we need to make user Linda owner and take away all permissions for the user owner. Then we have the group owner and the group owner that should be pro set to profs and this group profs needs all permissions. Let me show you. Chong Linda colon uh, profs on slash data slash profs. So what does that look like? Well, if we check it, ls minus ld, we can now see that Linda and profs are set as owner. For now, we don't have the right permissions yet. And we are going to fix that. Uh, according to the remainder of the requirements, which is members of the group profs should be able to read and write files in the directory, so they need to read, write, and execute. And also, nobody else should have access to the directory. So that is nothing for Linda, everything for the group, and nothing for others. So it's a little bit uncommon, but chmod 070 on slash data slash profs ls minus ld on data profs and let's check it out. This is what we need. 
And uh, you already know, you want to verify, you can do that by using the lab uh, 43 grade script. And there we can see that the lab script uh, considers all our work all right. All right, next task. In this task, you are going to find all files with a size bigger than 100 megabytes and write a long listing of these files to the file slash tmp slash big files. Like before, you're ready for it? Go for it. If not, watch the additional information. So what is needed for this lab? Well, first, you have the find utility, and the find utility is used to find files based on any property. If you want to perform a command on the result of the find command, you add minus exec followed by the command that you want to run, followed by curly braces backslash semicolon to the find command. Grep is a utility that you need to search for a regular expression in files or command output. And different sets of regular expressions exist, including base regular expressions and extended regular expressions. And if you want to use extended regular expressions, you can use grep minus e. It's confusing about grep. There's base regular ex uh, expressions and extended regular expressions are not mutually supported, so that can be confusing. And if you want to use a powerful alternative uh, for grep, uh, use awk. Now let's check out the solution. So find it is, find all files with a size bigger than 100 megabytes. So find slash minus size plus 100 M. And write a long listing of these files to the file TMP big files. Well, I would use minus exec uh, ls minus l double curly braces. The opening and closing curly brace refers to the result of the find command. Backslash semicolon. Before doing the redirect, I want to see it on screen. And that looks kind of okay. We see a couple of error messages, but these error messages are taken care of by the redirect. So I can repeat this last command and just add greater than uh, to slash tmp slash big files to the command. And that should take care of it. Now, also on the exam, I would always advise you verify. So I'm going to less on tmp big files, and there we can see the list of big files looking all right to me. So uh, let's verify. So don't forget to verify by using the great script. Okay, so find all files, that would be find slash uh, minus size. We want to find based on size plus 100 M, bigger than 100 megabytes. And uh, minus type F to make sure that we are looking at files only and we don't get any matches on directories or other weird items. And write along listing, so minus exec LS minus L, double curly braces backslash semicolon. And before doing anything else, I'd like to see the result. And this looks like what I want. Uh, we can ignore the uh, few error messages like no such file or directory or permission denied because they are not going to be redirected anyway if you use the greater than slash tmp slash big files. So now let's verify. And as you can see, this is a correct solution.